Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update. Today's Friday, February 10th. Hope all is well. Hope everybody had a great week of trading. I uh, want to talk about a couple housekeeping notes here first. I'm going to be doing some live streaming going forward, and it's going to stream directly to our Facebook page and directly to our YouTube page. So if you haven't already, make sure you go follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you get so you get notified when we're doing that. Uh, I'm going to do it at different times and eventually find out kind of a consistent time that that works well. You know, maybe on Monday mornings when the market opens and just kind of give an overview of the market and, and what I'm seeing and what's going on. Uh, I'm going to be on these live broadcasts. I'm going to be doing announcing upcoming events that we're going to be doing. Uh, some additional, we're working on a couple new courses that we're getting ready to uh, pump out to you guys. Um, and, and so just got a ton of exciting stuff going on that, that I want to keep you guys informed of. So if you haven't already, uh, make sure you, make sure you uh, are connected with us on social media, Facebook and YouTube, and stay tuned for that. We've got a new course coming out that I'm going to announce here uh, probably in the next week or so. So stay tuned for that. For now, let's jump into the trade alerts. For the week so starting on monday the first alert we had was in eww so we opened a, a strangle in eww uh, we've, we've now got two strangles on and let's see eww so we've got uh we've got this one price right here we're in the profit not enough to take it off yet though and then we've also got this other strangle uh where where price is kind of up up against our our upper side Nothing to do yet. No need to adjust. Uh, if we get a move down, we'll we'll be in better shape. Uh, if it keeps moving up, we'll need to adjust. But I'll make sure notify if any of those happen. So nothing else to do at this point in EWW. <clears throat> Next trade was scroll to it here. Next trade was in uh, it was a closing trade in EWZ. So we had a uh, we had a calendar spread on in EWZ took that off for a nice profit. Uh, we, we got a tiny pop in implied volatility. If we take a look at EWZ. Um, I mean, real, real tiny, nothing, uh, nothing much, but it gave us enough of a profit to get out of that trade. And as we got closer and closer to expiration, at that point, we only had 10 days left. So uh, at that point, you're, you're really get your finger on the trigger looking to, looking to take that off any, for any profit at all. Next trade was a closing trade in TLT. So this was the, uh, the put side of an iron condor. So we had an iron condor on and moved down past our, our short strike, down past our break even. So we removed the, the call side a couple weeks ago and we just held on to the put side, got our little bit of a move back up and we were able to take off the, the whole trade for a really nice profit. So that was a great trade. Uh, next trade was in soybeans. So it was a closing trade. We had an iron condor on in soybeans. So last couple weeks we've taken off uh, two really nice profits on iron condors in soybeans. They're, they are an excellent trading vehicle. The only problem is you cannot use the implied volatility indicator on um, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the grains. So soybeans, corn, and wheat you can't really use this. this because of the futures contracts and the way that they expire and roll. It's not the same as a stock or ETF. So the data coming in is not accurate. So don't pay attention to the IV indicator on those three futures. Uh, the other, the other future you can't pay attention to it on is in natural gas. Okay. That's just, that's not accurate. You, uh, the good thing about natural gas is you've got a corresponding ETF UNG and that is accurate. So you've got to use the IV on UNG to trade the natural gas futures in and and the other one is bonds so in bonds and notes you can't get an accurate reading on the IV indicator so you have to use TLT and that gives you an idea of if implied volatility in bonds and notes is high or low so keep that in mind just a couple little nuances that you got to remember Let's see, next trade was in, uh, I mentioned soybeans, that uh, we had a, a opening trade in TLT. IV popped right back up at right around 50, IV percentile did. 
and so we put on a strangle in TLT. So keep in mind, this, this TLT is a, a versatile product, so meaning um, you, can, you can trade either a strangle like I did with undefined risk. If you're in an IRA, you could have traded an iron condor and used similar strikes, but you're just gonna be a little bit tighter in, not quite as wide of a range, and you're gonna have that defined risk. So that's a matter of preference. But the idea with these alerts is for me to alert you of the idea, show you what I'm doing, and then you can make it your own. So um, this, this trade's still very centered, got a little bit of a profit, but not enough to take off yet. So we'll continue to monitor that. Next trade was in uh, the queues. So we had a we had a double calendar on in the queues after after our adjustment. Uh, we had the 120 uh, 127 calendar here, which we took off, and because a couple things. One, I wanted to reduce risk, so we're taking half of our risk off. We've only got uh, seven days until expiration. And so I just I wanted to reduce the risk there. If we get it, if we get a move down, and potentially get into some profit there next week, I'll take that off as, as soon as possible. But I've got my finger on the trigger to, to take this one off as soon as possible. We can't adjust this. You can't add another one, uh, another calendar on to widen our break evens. There's not enough time to expiration. Uh, this is all stuff that I cover in the calendars course. So make sure you go back and and rewatch that if it's been a while or if you've never if you've never viewed it. Uh, let's see. Next trade was uh, another calendar in DIA, which is the Dow Jones Industrial ETF. Uh, IV percentile at that time was at six. So remember, we wanna, we wanna put these calendars on in times of low implied volatility. And so let's check out DIA. Um, it, price has moved up since then, so we've got it right here. If we, get if we get around the break even next week, we'll look to add another calendar on here. So remember, when, you put a, when we put a calendar on, we wanna look at this uh, as, a, as potentially having to, if we need to adjust, we're gonna add another calendar. So you need to make sure you have the capital available to do so, and you've got to uh, you know, just pay attention to it, wait for the alerts, and, and you know, if it keeps moving higher, we'll put on another calendar here, widen out those break evens, and then look for an increase in implied volatility. So if the market moves down in stocks, that's, that's typically gonna push the implied volatility up. So really we're looking for a, for a move down to both benefit us directionally and implied volatility wise. So uh, this, market, this market's strong. I mean, it just keeps continuing to go up. It can't go up forever, but, uh, but we'll, continue to, uh, we'll continue to manage and, and monitor regardless of what happens. Next trade was in natural gas. So I sent out two separate alerts. So one for the calls and one for the puts. So we had this, uh, we had the strangle on in natural gas and the price moved, had a big move down today. Natural gas, depending on the contract, you're looking at about 3% drop in natty gas. You can see there, pretty, pretty decent size move. And so what we're looking at here, we, first of all, we've got this iron condor on in natural gas. No, uh, no profit or loss at this point, so just holding that. But the, the strangle now looks like this. So uh, price moved down, our break even was, was right about here at that point. And so uh, with, with this contract, there's, um, there was only 13 days to expiration. So I didn't wanna just roll the calls down. What you do when there's, when there's less than 20 days to expiration, uh, 20 days to expiration is not only did I, uh, you don't just roll the calls down, you actually roll them out to the next expiration cycle. So what that does is you can see it's, it uh, increased our range, increased our profit range, our break evens uh, tremendously, gave us more credit. So we collected a credit and gave ourselves more time. Collected a credit, gave ourselves more time, widened our break evens. That, that's why you do it. Now, um, in UNG, in natural gas, the implied volatility percentile is still at 54. So that's the other reason why I wanted to extend that duration. IV percentile is still good. We're collecting good credit. And uh, it, it's definitely a position we want to be in, especially since there's so many vehicles out there right now with low implied volatility. 
we really got to take advantage of the ones who, who do have high IV at this point. Next trade was in gold, GLD. So we had a uh, put, initially put on a calendar in GLD. Uh, price moved up, had to add another calendar. So we had a double calendar on. And then um, price had a price had a nice move uh, move in our direction, uh, especially yesterday. And then the first part of uh, first part of today, GLD was down, and so we were able to take off that that full double calendar for a nice little little profit. Not as much as we wanted, but uh, with with GLD, uh, the the position was in the February cycle, so only seven days to expiration. Uh, you, you take on a lot more risk the closer you get to expiration. Take on a lot more what's called gamma risk. So we wanted to get out of that for a profit uh, just in case gold were to pop back up, which at the time we got out was, was good because gold was down here and it since rallied back up. So that was a good, <clears throat> that was a good trade. And lastly, uh, put on a, a trade in Apple. So uh, I try to stay fairly neutral. I mean, these are all income trades. These are fairly delta neutral trades when we initiate them. However, I also like to keep short delta in the portfolio, meaning have a, a downside bias. And the reason is, is because typically when the, when the markets go up, volatility is going to contract. So we're going to make money on our income trades. Uh, but we, what we also need to be protected on the downside. And with the extremes that we're seeing in the overall market, and, and in particularly, I chose Apple as a stock to uh, to put some short delta on. I mean, this this thing's just had a tremendous run. Had a couple members talk about, man, why, why are you why would you short Apple? You know, they're so strong, and and that's true. And and, and Apple is always kind of a darling of, of Wall Street and darling of investors because it has been such a strong stock. Just I mean, over the years in in general, but uh, what goes up must come down. I mean, you know, there's no other way to say it. And and there's no additional probability that I have. I mean, it, it, it's still, I'm just making basically a trade uh, looking for some short delta in, in my overall portfolio. And, and I like to do that when stocks and ETFs are at price extremes. Okay, so if something is, is rallied extremely high, I like, to, I like to be a contrarian and go against that and look for to put a little bit of short delta on. Uh, if it's not right for your portfolio, then you don't need to take the trade. The trade alerts are not meant to be where you take every single trade exactly like I do. It, you've got to do what fits your account size. You've got to do what fits your portfolio. And in this case, this was a, this was a good choice for me. So that is all the trades for the week. Uh, let's, let's go through. We've got a couple other positions on still. Uh, XRT. I actually tried to get filled in this trade to close it out uh, both Thursday and Friday. We're, we were right at that 50% of max profit. I just didn't get filled, so I'm not, I, I didn't want to chase it. So we'll, we'll wait to the weekend, but I'll be aggressively looking to get out, of, get out of our XRT trade on Monday or Tuesday. Uh, TLT, I mentioned the queues. Uh, uh, the queues, I had, so we had a double calendar on here and I took that one off. Uh, we'll, we'll be looking for a potential little down move. I left this one on because again, that added some more short delta to our portfolio, meaning we will benefit if it goes down. So keep an eye on that. IWM, we've got an iron condor on right here. Just kind of at the no profit, no loss, uh, but still well within our range. So we'll continue to monitor that. And then IBM, uh, you know, we're getting close to expiration. We've got seven days left. Uh, we're, we're in the profit here, so I'm going to be aggressive about taking this trade off so it doesn't run out of our profit zone. Uh, I was hoping this, this uh, expiration line would move back up if we got a little bit of a pop in volatility, but you can see uh, since we, even since we put it on, implied volatility is even lower, which does not help a calendar spread. So if we do get a pop in volatility or if we don't, I'm going to be aggressive. I don't want to take a loss on this trade, so we'll, we'll uh, stay tuned for that. FXY, we've also got a strangle in the nice profit, almost ready to take off. We'll, we'll look at aggressively managing that potentially Monday or Tuesday. Uh, FXE, we've got this iron condor on, got a nice profit in there, but not quite enough to take off. 
I mentioned EWW, uh, wheat. So wheat, we've also got an iron condor in, right in our range. Had a nice move up in wheat today, which which helped us, got us got us in the range that we wanted to be in. So we'll we'll continue to monitor that and, and take that off once the profit gets to. 40% of max profit like we like to take on the iron condors. So that wraps it up. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, look forward to another great week of trading next week and have a great weekend. Talk to you then.